everybody and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. Today's topic is uh, moving beyond first eco kits. I've had purchased, been given eco kits and period kits over um, the last couple of years. Um, I have these canvas bags and um, I have the, uh, you know, these types of um, shopping zero waste kits that obviously I also um, tie-dyed. Um, I have water bottles, reusable containers and cutlery sets um, like this, um, nesting containers, straws, um, stasher bags, nesting containers, bento boxes, stainless steel pegs and the point of this is that um, I have all this stuff that I want on my reduced or zero waste journey I'm not a particularly big fan of zero waste because it doesn't actually address the history of that product and the history of the waste of that product in the time it takes to get to you however um, I have noticed a few things that have been super useful um, and a lot of these, um, so for example these uh, nesting containers um, I've used a lot and have been far more in use than this say bento box. But um, in the cutlery sets I did do a, I uh, have done a comparison on um, cutlery sets and straw types um, which I'll link up on the left hand corner um, for you guys to have a look. But um, there is no really great next step in eco care, um, especially when it comes to say eco boxes um, and quite often eco boxes contain sample sizes and often uh, cutlery straws and vegetable bags. Um, I have given away multiple sets um, of straws and cutlery sets and all of that type of stuff because um, I have purchased eco boxes and that's kind of what I've been given so I have obviously passed them on to um, people that don't have them and that need them. There is new, there was new or there will be new Bear and Wild boxes out as well as Biomi and Flora and Fauna Eco Box releases. Um, however, I do notice that I had most of the items in these boxes and I think I've stated before in one of the Flora and Fauna boxes um, that they're just these sample sizes so even if you get that product and you like it and you go and purchase it they are often in sizes that are uh, quite big or you might not want them in the sizes that um, they come in so obviously i haven't been purchasing these eco boxes because there's nothing really of value in them for me now um, i think the last one i did get was a bear and wild box at the start of the year um, and of course that had a reusable cup in it um, I already have reusable cups I have multiple reusable cups <laughs> it's kind of like getting an eco box with a water bottle in it that's really kind of the first thing that you should have you know you shouldn't have to think about having a water bottle with you you should have it already so However, it actually also got me thinking about period prep packs um, and obviously starter or teen prep packs. Um, I do think that all of these eco and... So for some reason the birds have gone absolutely mental outside. Um, there is like... Uh, the, there's like a murder of crows around. I don't know why, there could just be a dead body in one of the houses, but they seemingly, as soon as I hit record, started going off. Um, which of course is super frustrating but I guess we will try and continue on and hopefully it won't be that annoying even though it's super annoying so it kind of depends on which um, kit you buy or purchase or create um, often what is covered um, in them uh, like is a wet bag or a pencil case and a selection of goods um, that are a mix quite often of disposable and reusable which is a great thing um, so Morty Body, Love Luna um, and Love Luna both have teen ranges 
quite a few of these menstrual cup companies such as Hello Cup have uh, super small or teen cups allowing teens to become fam familiar with an array of menstrual um, products um, as they are developing. And of course, sometimes these boxes, uh, kits and extra luxuries can expand um, how we are more mobile in our eco journey, especially as we can be particularly brand loyal um, in our tampons and in our pads. So generally, um, often what you'll find is um, children will use the same product as their parent um, because their parent has purchased that product for them. Um, so the kind of the point is when we begin to change it's exciting to request these items um, as presents or receive these items or purchase these items um, and then of course in fact to use these items um, and these aren't even the super basic kind of like as i mentioned the water bottle replacement it's kind of when you start on say menstrual products you might go to compostable pads or compostable uh, tampons thinking that you're making a better eco choice so you've kind of gone from your store bought one to more of a compostable one and then you might think oh but this is still creating waste um, there's actually no difference between organic cotton tampons and regular cotton tampons in their ability to cause TSS so then you then move on to cloth pads period underwear or a menstrual cup But the question is always, what next? How do I move away from plastics in the kitchen, in the bathroom? Um, I use bar soaps and conditioners, um, as you can see, like these in little tins. Um, and But I still use toothpaste that's in a tube and I still have a plastic toothbrush. There is a difficult path to take when using what you have is often the best way. Where, but when it breaks or cracks, replacing it from where is important. Everything seemingly is becoming more and more critical, but say thrifting is bad if you can afford anything better. So there can be massive privilege in thrifting, but also in the criticism of it. So moving beyond first eco also means moving beyond the judgment of how multiple people gain access to their journey. Perfection is always going to be a non-starter. I have given away cloth pads that I have no longer used, allowing three other people to remove themselves from the single waste um, use disposable cycle. This means that these pads have had multiple uses. They have taught me about my preferences in size and shape and materials and they have freed somebody else. These firsts in sustainability and eco kits can open up multiple ideas and opportunities. However, I have also been criticized by having quite a large stash and quite a big stash or having a stash so big that I've had to give them away. However, they can give you a tangibility to what you're doing. The nesting containers, as I mentioned before, are brilliant. I use them all the time. The same with the stasher bags. I use them all of the time. But I have seen criticism of both of these things from people who don't use stasher bags or didn't like stasher bags or didn't want to use them. So for them, it was a wasteful purchase. For me, it was a massively useful purchase. Team period kits are often full of additional products like chocolate, heating pads, fluffy socks, stickers to be inclusive and welcoming to all new menstruators. But this does not mean we wouldn't want items and enjoyment beyond that in our 20s or 30s or 40s, which is at a time when you're entering into perimenopause and then, of course, menopause. But there's nothing really in that market that produces... I've seen a lot of uh, tamp like tampon and pad um, gift boxes that are aimed at every three months you'll get this box of tampons or pads and it might come with additional extras but that's still contributing to the waste cycle. Incremental life changes are vital and allow for better choices. These um, silicon baking mats are excellent and reduce your cleaning load um, from your usually filthy pans. 
one of these things I guess for me is the glass jars as cups you know with the jar lid ridges I find it is really displeasing I can't drink out of them where those glasses have those horrible like well not glasses those like mason jars that are being used as cups I don't get it I find it aesthetically a nightmare but also horrible to actually drink out of it I seriously don't get it I reuse glass jars as storage containers of course but I don't see why you'd need to use it as a hipster drink vessel. You're suggesting you don't have a cup or a mug? Okay then, I have over time evolved my style and I love double walled cups like these types of, this one's from Cheeky and this one's from Ever Ego. They do have lids, I just don't have them on the table with us. But um, it also works with my clean canteen water bottles that um, these work um, in and out of the house with or without water they don't sweat and leave ring marks which I personally can't stand um, it also eliminates the need of having um, something underneath your glass or your cup because you don't need it because your glass isn't sweating or um, you know leaving marks on tables or benches so um, I have obviously several of them um, and so which means I do have cups for visitors or people who are over and I have no need to be precious about my table by using mats or cup holders still my point is I can do better and I can be better while I choose reusable bags and have done so for over 25 years um, I've had water bottles my entire life since childhood um, the, the <laughs> and um, use obviously reusable coffee cups and I've been using reusable coffee cups for um, 10 to 12 years. Um, take leftovers in reusable containers. This does not mean that I am or I will be perfect and neither will most of the people on here. Making videos on um, YouTube, we are all here trying to do our best, living, living differently in different locations with different cultural values. For example, hanging out your clean but wet washing on a line outside in your own yard in the sun is normal. It is even normal if you live in an apartment to hang them on group lines out the back of the apartment. Using a dryer is very much discouraged. Even in apartments, a drying rack is predominantly used. In America, not so much. Dryers are normalised and hanging items outside seems to be a serious no-no. While it would be very easy to state at... Um, that the overuse of a dryer is environmentally disastrous, uh, defeating a cultural norm can definitely be difficult and can often require being confronted with ideology that is not your own. As much as I wouldn't think of using a dryer, another may not think to not use it um, and to utilise the free power of the sun. Maybe instead of attacking every little thing a YouTuber does, maybe focus on the lesson that they're attempting to impart. Together, we far more are able to move beyond first eco or period kits and into advanced environmental swaps and changes. Sometimes a better option is to use the shampoo and conditioner in plastic bottles that were or are gifted um, than to throw them out. Nearly every time it is better to make the best sustainable choice that you can rather than somebody else's. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the day. And I, of course, will catch up with you all next video. Bye, everyone.